Welcome to Little Owl Literacy. Today we're going to be talking about pre-reading activities. When you sit down to read with your child, there should be constant engagement and conversation going on. The mistake that a lot of people make is that what it's supposed to look like is that your child is reading to you and they read from page one to the end of the book and voila, you've just had a successful reading instructional time. That's not what it's supposed to look like actually. That's just what people think it's supposed to look like. Actually, a more successful literacy session would be to constantly be pausing and talking about the story and also for you to be reading potentially as much or even more than your child. It just depends on their age group and the level of the book you're reading. So there are three times that you really want to touch in when you're reading together. Pre-reading, during reading, and post-reading. Basically, all the time. <laughs> when you first pick up a book, have your child look at the book. Look through everything. Ask them questions. Let them make predictions. This seems so simple, but it's such an important cognitive skill for them to have, and it helps so much with their comprehension. So let them look at the cover. Look at the picture on the cover. What do they think this picture is telling them about the story? Look at the title of the book. What do they think is going to happen based on the title? Read the back of the book. What do they think is going to happen based on the summary they just read in the blurb? If it has a table of contents, and this is for an older youth, let them read through the table of contents to get an idea of what's going on there. Let them flip through the whole book if they want to. And it's not all about making predictions, but allowing them to get familiar with the structure of the book and the different sections of the book, the way the book is laid out, all of these things. There are so many different ways this is a benefit to youth, some of which I've just mentioned. And one of the greatest benefits is for struggling readers who get very nervous when they pick up a new book for the first time. So imagine that to them a new book looks like a vast landscape. They're looking across the fields of Mordor and trying to figure out, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this? By going through the book and looking at each page and looking at the structure of the book and looking at the chapter headings, they get a chance to get familiar with the landscape and it seems less intimidating for them by doing that. Now at this point you might want to determine your level of hand-holding for your youth, for your student, for your child. If the book you've chosen together is a little above their level, that's fine. It just means that you'll need to participate a little more to help them be successful. If they're truly, truly struggling readers, I would recommend that you take on the responsibility for most, if not all, of the reading. And if the book wasn't chosen by them, um, then definitely let them choose a book that's at their own level. But if they did choose a book that's at above their level, then you take on most of the responsibility to keep their stress level low. I'd let them know that you're going to do that. It's really important to teach them how to identify what books are going to be accessible to them and using language that will help them feel like we're all learning. All of us are learning. It's not about, oh, well, I'm in fourth grade and I can't read this fourth grade text. That doesn't matter. Teach them that those levels can be very arbitrary and that they're very generalized. And really what's important is how do we engage with the text as an individual according to our own experience and our own knowledge. This is also an opportunity to ask them if it reminds them of anything. You know, does the cover remind you of another book you've read? Does the, the title remind you of something? Does it remind you of a feeling that you've had in the past? And again, these are really great ways for them to build connections with themselves, with the text, with the world, which we'll talk about in another video.